Yeah, I'm doing really fine. I I really like your film, so I'm really excited uh, to talk to you as well about thank it. Thank you, thank you. And uh, the first question that I actually had for you is that uh, how did you decide to do Fall? Because with every movie that you were doing in the past, like you were increasing your scope and scale of the action, but here you are kind of stripping it down to the like the basics, less than basics. Yeah. So, like, yeah. what was the deciding factor? Uh, the deciding factor, honestly, was I, I felt like I felt like um, the way the film industry has turned over the last kind of 10, 20 years has been has changed dramatically. You know, some for the good, some for the bad. But I I, I feel like the 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 cinema. What I experienced in previous films was there is a level of which kind of fil- which film should be at the cinema and which shouldn't really, right? And and cinema itself has changed the focus of of what is a true kind of theatrical experience and what you can get out of it. And I think that the focus with this film was the very first time where myself and, and Jonathan Corey we were like, look, let's let's really do something that's experience driven. That actually. Uh, and we and we looked at making it like a theme park ride. That's how kind of how we designed it. We're like, look, look, going to the cinema really is about is about going on a ride. If you, you know what I mean, and as much as kind of story story elements, like if you want to see a drama, I think you know you can go on stream, right? You can. You've got different genres fit different kind of uh, mediums, and I think that it was very much a case of look, we have never seen. Uh, a, a heights kind of horror that really accentuates and plays in all those kind of places with heights and the way to do that is really to to use that theatrical experience the theme park ride and and it's weird someone said to me actually an interesting line that there's another film that's happened this year for the first time I would say that has also done that uh, but that film has a huge budget and and and, and uh, which is Top Gun right and Top Gun in a way someone said to me like Top Gun was like Disneyland and this is like Six Flags and Magic Mountain because it's a similar thing where you take take the audience and you and and it's terrifying right and it's like and you're taking them through that kind of uh, uh, the different range of emotions of excitement terror and, and whatnot and and I think, uh, uh, yeah, and, and 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 making it into more like a theme park ride was, was very much kind of front and center uh, of, of going into this one. And how are you with heights? Like, did you have any like real life incidents that you got to exercise? I, yeah, I, 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 I've heard, I hate heights, right? Like most people on earth, I think it's a very common thing, right? Like, let's be honest, like it's, it's it, your body tells you like, stay the hell away from the edge, right? For right, for good reasons, right? Um, and you have to be so careful. And so uh, it was really finding a way to kind of tap into that and tap into that as a central kind of device um, more than just a sequence. Because I think there's been other sequences in movies that hats off to them, you know, and I would say the Dubai climb um, in, in Mission Impossible is one of my favorite sequences that was done so well. Um, but it was really looking at, okay, how can we get more out of it? How can we pull out of things like Free Solo was a big influence with us um, in terms of really kind of getting into Alex's head when he did that climb. It's like uh, applying similar things to really give the audience a point of view of just that terrifying climb and, and experience, you know? Yeah, I, I have to tell you that I screamed at my screen four times throughout the movie because I'm really bad <laughs> with heights. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> You know what's for? I would just encourage you, Kurt. Please go see it on the biggest screen possible. Because I, I, when I've seen that, like with te- well, what's been wonderful with tests and with audiences, when I've seen it, it's like it it, it is like a roller coaster because you're gripping on and you're screaming, and it's like, and that's the best you know feeling for me is is kind of when people go through those paces. It's 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 really rewarding to you know to see that. And what was the uh, casting process like? Like, did they also need to have a very good fear of heights uh, to get cast in this movie, or did they? Well, or the, it's a the, fun, yeah, funny, funny you ask that, right? So I actually had um, uh, so casting process. Two things happened. This was the first time um, I ever had actually. I, I could cast honestly, right? In terms of like uh, the the finances, the, the, basically going into this, James Harris, the producer, and the finances, Christian and David, we were like, okay, let's let's make the best film we can, and the way to do that really is to get this little crack team together film this for real on the top of a mountain, keep the budget incredibly low so that we have to, so we're not forced into the wrong choices, like casting the wrong person for the wrong reason. And so, so the casting process was a case of, it was during COVID. So, so um, essentially audition tips came through and, and people auditioned. I met with them. Um, a lot of the actresses, uh, the second part of this is that a lot of the actresses 
um, would say, just like actors, all actors lie about things, right? They all say, I can do like, I can do horse riding. I'm a contact lens wearer. Like I love dogs. And it's like, you know, and, and that is very common that I've seen with actors, <laughs> actors in the audition process. So I tried to weed that out of everyone by showing them the plans on how we were shooting it, which is basically, look, we're building this big structure on the edge of a 2000 foot cliff and we're going to film it for real and put you up there for real. And I could tell like when I was interviewing them, which ones quivered and we're like, oh, and, and <laughs> And I felt like, and what was great about Ginny and Grace is, is they kind of like were honest about it. They're like, well, shit, I, I've done some wire work, but this looks horrible. And that was the right kind of answer to know. At least they were telling me the truth. Uh, although I do think Ginny slightly exaggerated how, how confident she was with the wire work, but, but no, but um, uh, it was, it, it was, it was interesting. And I, and I made it like, that was the point. I kind of knocked everyone out that I felt unsure about because we're filming the whole film at this height for you know for several weeks like we cannot have a situation where it, you know it, it's it's just not possible to do it right so um so it was very much a case of getting um uh getting the honest takes on it and then really it, the casting process was about about seeing the two together and seeing how the the, the two actors kind of work together and, and and again it was on it was on zoom that we did these kind of auditioning processes and worked through this so a very difficult kind of circumstance but um but there was a natural chemistry between both of them and and um and and, I, and it really kind of shone out and stuck out to me that, that it felt like the characters that we'd written really came to life and they brought them to life. And I, and I, I um, uh, so yeah, so that it was, it was really, it was, it was the best casting process I've been through my entire career, just cause it was, it was honest and truthful and it was, you know, low key in a sense. So, yeah. And one thing I have to give you credit for is that like, there is no scene where I thought that they weren't on that tower because in terms yeah, of yeah. cinematography and the VFX, it all looked real. Like even the sound design yeah. where the foot hits the uh, metal pipes and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. So, what kind of uh, like, where, where was it real and where was all the digital, digital trickery beginning? Like, where was uh, well, well, I think the only thing that's not really real is like, is at the start of the film, when we're looking down over a mount, like the, the climbing stuff at the very start of the film, there was, and it was, more to do with the practice we planned to shoot that for real but then there was an issue with something with locations and whatnot so so that ended up we, we haven't used some blue screen there but actually for the for the film for the bulk of the film itself um it was it was it, it was an engineering project right we had to go like getting we went to the guys who built the original tower that it was based on which was uh, uh out of arizona over 2000 feet high we went to those guys so they were structurally building real tower and essentially we found this location with this great kind of cliff drop off it was like over 2,000 feet up it had this wonderful landscape and it took a long time to find the location I will add it was like myself producer James we drove around all the deserts around Los Angeles area and beyond to try and find the right place and and we came across this place called Shadow Mountain really rickety road to get up there like terrifying frankly because there's lots of drop off and um um, but we managed to kind of um, we had to we had to kind of widen the road a little bit to be able to get the tower equipment up, and we built this tower or sections of the tower uh, at the top of that mountain, and and that's so we filmed so so all of the film that you see is real, and then what what becomes is that when you kind of when you're filming it, and then you, when you end up looking kind of straight down, we ended up filming at the desert flat location, just not that far away, honestly and matching in the footage. So when you're looking straight down, you're not seeing the crew and the cranes and the top of the mountain, you're seeing the ground. So, it's, so it was kind of this, this trickery, old school kind of camera trickery in the sense of, uh, of not really faking anything, but kind of combining elements to feel real. And I guess, I guess from a sound perspective, I will say actually, what, what would be fair to say is that the sound design and the, and the, and the great sound work that the team did and Alex did, uh, Dave, um, they, they made like the, the actual structure of that tower for safety reasons was stunt truss in the center. The tube piece is like stunt truss. And, um, and we had to wrap it with a, a, a essentially cardboard tubing that was dressed by Scott Daniels, our designer to make it look like metal. But when, when, but the reason you, it feels like metal is because yeah, every touch that's done, there's a sound effect that kind of feels like metal. And I think that combination of like old school trickery uh, and uh, uh, and great design and, and kind of a plan coming together was how it, how it kind of combines there, I think. And in addition to being like so physically taxing, it looked also like they were mentally withering away. So, so how did you yeah. kind of ensure that these two actors like always were in the right mind space for everything? Yeah, good question. I, you know, and I, I, what's interesting about that is uh, we had a, uh, 
I was aware that when they were up the tower, right, um, they were going to be up there for pretty much as long as their bladders allowed them to be. And so we kind of planned it that in the bag that's there, there was like water, there was like dust, like maybe dust and, and a couple of other essential things that they could kind of self do up there. Cause it's the access is it's so difficult getting up and down as you imagine. Um, I would some, but, but for me directing them, it's very difficult because uh, either I'm on the ground with like say the Technocrane crew or whatever, or I'm on a crane, like a little bucket crane, kind of load up nearby them at least with a monitor, but it makes it hard to monitor. So there's this combination of like difficulties. But what we did uh, to counter the, the the access difficulty really was was I built um, a very uh, basic version of the top of the tower out of wood. I just got like a jigsaw, some plywood, and I cut it and I put the pole. And this was actually before we we kind of went into proper production. Um, and and the uh, uh, Ginny and Grace came over to my backyard, and we basically blocked out and and acted out the whole film uh, and worked out the kind of directing the intimate directing elements so that we had a frame of reference and and um, and especially in terms of tone, because I, I do think like both both Ginny and Grace give kind of this stellar performance of so, such range that that we we needed kind of a go to of like reference point of okay this is a this you know even on a number scale of like this is a five and this is an eight that's a nine and save the 10 for that right so um so it was so we had a shorthand um that made it a lot easier when i'm shouting over a bullhorn in front of everyone going that's great and it was you know so it was so to, to counter that awkward that knowing that awkwardness was coming uh we we, we did that and it um yeah and it was an interesting way of doing it really so on that scale that you just mentioned that where does the uh vulture eating scene comes because no. that was just insane. Like, what did she eat actually, and how was it's, it? Done? You know, I, I actually I got this from the experiment because I, I found someone they had these some kind of uh, party and it was like rah, rah, this vulture thing. I um uh so we had um on the vultures. The vultures were arguably the hardest thing uh, to do in the movie because uh, I, I jokingly say how. How the only sh like uh, as actors, they really just don't take any direction whatsoever, obviously. And uh, and they're professional Hollywood vultures that were brought in. There's like three in Hollywood that do the rounds, right? And they're trained and obviously utmost care for their actual care. Um, and and they're kind of uh, and the teams are great, but they they literally don't do anything you might want. So you almost have to kind of factor around like what's the vulture going to do today, and then kind of tip your set and your plans around it. Um, and yeah, it was it was really difficult because they're real. Like there's a couple of shots where we kind of comp in stuff, but ultimately, like we used real, you know, because they're close to vultures, real vultures, and it was um that was that was very difficult to do, yeah, in truth. And um and I know that the that that it was like we had to be careful as well because they do have exceptionally sharp beaks, and um and the and so in terms in terms of like how we went about certain things in the movie, we had to be careful. But it's kind of funny though because we we had these real vultures, and then for the interactions of like when she's beating off the vulture, we had like. <laughs> <laughs> we had this terrible like that is better than the vulture that we used for the actual movie which was like basically a bag of feathers spray painted in a color hanging off string and we're just knocking it over like <laughs> over grace's head and it's and she's fighting off it and and when you see the rushes when you pull out and see the rushes it it, it literally like people on set were laughing out loud because it was so kind of bad but 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 mixing that in with the real vulture and everything else it, you know like most films when you actually look Look outside of what's on the set. You, you see kind of those things, but but yeah, they were the they were arguably the biggest challenge in the movie was was the vultures. So yeah, um, it was hard. <laughs> and my final question to you is that like, what's uh, one thing like opinion or thought that you want audiences to walk away with after watching for? Um, I would like them to. I, I, I would hope. Well, I, I've got two. One is the kind of the journey, the character. Like, because I, I think there's an element of. Uh, like there's an honest story on, in there as well, like about grief and a personal thing for me. And, and I think we've had a, a few years of, of, of hurt, obviously, with what we've all gone through in different ways. And I, and I feel like, you know, Becky's story and her struggle and, and where she goes through the story is very much reflective of that. And it's quite cathartic. And I think, uh, you know, there's a there's a rebirth survival kind of growth element to the story that I, I, I really uh, you know, that, that I personally love from a character point of view. Um, but honestly, I also want people just to enjoy it and 
I, I think as a, as a theme park ride movie experience, it's, it's like, I, I want people to enjoy that and want to go back and, and, and enjoy it again and again. And I think it's like, you know, another ticket for the ride, please, would be what I would hope and, and encourage everyone. Yeah, biggest screen possible uh, uh, for the most intense experience possible. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was a real pleasure talking you. to you. And I Thank wish you very much. You too, man. I'm so, yeah, sorry it's so short as well, because these things, it's like we have to whisk through yes. them, but... But but thank you. I, I appreciate it, man. And it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Uh, all the best for the film. Every hour that passes, the weaker we get. If anyone called 911, they'd be here by now. What is it that Dan used to say? If you're scared of dying, don't be afraid to live. <laughs>